This is the Digital Music Trends coverage of South by Southwest 2014, an interview with Alex White, CEO of the company Next Big Sound. DMT's coverage of South by Southwest is brought to you by Omniphone, the leading B2B cloud music provider powering global music services including Sony Music Unlimited, Guvera, Rara and Sirius XM. Find out more on Omniphone.com and by Music Graph, the world's first knowledge engine for music, available as a consumer app and as a graph API for developers. Check out MusicGraph.com or developer.musicgraph.com. Hello everyone and welcome to Digital Music Trends coverage of South by Southwest 2014 and it's a real pleasure to welcome Alex White, the CEO of Next Big Sound. So hi Alex and how's it going? Going very well. My last day at South by this year. Okay, cool. Have you been here for uh, like since last Thursday or? Uh, I didn't do the full stretch this right. time. I just uh, came down on Wednesday and, and out tonight, so a very quick oh, trip. Oh, it's nice and sweet, actually. I, I would love to be able to do that and just go all out and stay out all night. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, let's talk about next week. Sam, we haven't caught up maybe. In, it's been a while. It's been at least 18 months, if not 20. So, uh, you know, lots of stuff has been happening with the company. So, uh, quickly, an overview of the key milestones for you guys over the last uh, couple of years, actually. Yeah, so last... A couple of years have been very exciting for us. We moved the whole company from Boulder, Colorado to New York City. There's now, uh, you know, several dozen of us and uh, making data useful is, a, is our business. And so every single day it's all about, um, you know, increasing coverage of the number of sources, number of artists we track um, and how do we make it actually useful to the artists, the managers, the labels, agents, publishers and, and kind of our growing, growing client roster. Sure, of course, and uh, and uh, how does it? How, how have you expanded uh, that side of things? Uh, and uh, what do you think? Uh, what have you seen being most useful to artists and, and, and labels at this point? I think that uh, you know the more recent data sources we've added: Instagram, Tumblr. Um, uh, a YouTube user-generated content feed uh, have really um, added kind of even more coverage of the attention where consumers are spending their time and sure. the music fans are spending their time. Um, so in terms of usefulness, you know, there's uh, selecting which single should be made into a video yeah. and so using which ones are, are reacting. So we're seeing lots more of those sort of decisions being made. Um, and then we've actually started, uh, created a new product a year ago around research A&R. So how do we take Great. all the data that we track and make it useful for uh, A&R and up and coming artists? And you can slice and dice it across all the different uh, sources we track. So the fastest accelerating artists on YouTube that also have under 20,000 page likes on Facebook. Um, and that's another way uh, that a uh, push we're making to make all of this data that's now available actually useful to, to our customers. And that's, again, what prompted the move to New York is just close proximity to the music industry yeah. and access to a lot of hedge funds and big uh, financial firms where we've taken talent out of uh, in order to help us make sense of uh, crunch the data sets. Yeah, sure. And so talking about uh, how labels are using Next Big Sound to find the next uh, or to at least reinforce uh, their belief on, on acts that they found that they that they believe uh, have have something there. Uh, so is it? It's not just a major playground. So they also have uh, independence using using that uh, technique and, and trying to use data to find the next big act. Uh, right now, the product is a very uh, is a higher price point just because right. um, it's very early on, um, and so we just have kind of our first pioneering customers. And it's really this year is really interesting. The Shazam Warner deal, the three hundred yeah. Lior Cohen and uh, Twitter deal. Um, um, uh, you know, there's always been research A&R, but it feels like this year um, has a lot of more press and publicity and, and acceptance that this is going to be a, sure. a big part of the equation going forward. And I gave a uh, talk last year at South by Southwest around um, data-driven A&R. Yeah. Um, and I like to think that, you know, we're helping move that conversation forward. Yeah, and so one of the biggest, I guess, uh, news from the company in terms of awareness uh, around the world uh, was the fact that uh, Spotify uh, had you guys, on, uh, you know, brought you guys on board as uh, the core of their new artist-friendly strategy. I guess uh, yeah. you know to to make sure that to also to change the tide in, in negative conversations that were going on, on our, around around the company last year. And uh, one of the awesome things that they now allow you to do is to plug into Next Big Sound to track uh, uh, your plays on Spotify, how many there are, where they're coming from, and all sorts of types. So data. So, how has that experience uh, come about? First of all, and then how have you seen the adoption of that uh, evolve over the last few months? 
Yeah, that's a really exciting deal that we announced in December of last year. I've uh, been great working with the Spotify uh, folks from you know the client services, artist, artist relations folks to the technical staff and, and the senior leadership over there. And you know, I think it's huge for us and the us being the music industry of just increased data transparency. So I give them a lot of credit for really wanting um, to share these numbers around where their fans are, who they're interacting with, um, with the rights owner themselves. So obviously Spotify as a technology company, uh, you know, can build a great dashboard and they have one actually for, you know, partners of theirs, um, but they realized, you know, when they looked around the industry that the, the music industry was using Next Big Sound and combining the Spotify data with YouTube and iTunes data and Facebook data really just makes it all that much more valuable because Spotify is an ever-growing piece of the puzzle, but it is one uh, component and it, and it gets a lot more valuable when seen alongside all the other data uh, sources that are out there because music fans don't just listen in one place. Sure. And on that front, uh, are there any other uh, sort of API-driven data deals that you've done that I might have missed in over the last year? Um, earlier this year, we announced a deal with Grace Note, um, of course, yeah. which is kind of a, a very exciting deal for me and for us. We've looked at Grace Note for the last, you know, has been a leader in data in the music industry for you know, uh, you know, multiples of how long Next Big Sound's been around. And so I think that with uh, you know their their legacy in in this arena and our popularity data uh, really creates a powerful combination. Yeah, it's great actually. I had a chat with Brian uh, at Medium about this uh, from Grace Note, and uh, I asked him the question, you know, you know, you could have maybe tried to do something like Next Big Sound, but he said, no, actually, you know, they have the expertise in doing that. So we decided to partner with them instead and, and you know, we, we get much better data as a consequence. Yeah, and I think we're seeing this, the music industry, you know, it's all about finding the lanes that, that uh, everyone's best at and so you know when Spotify can focus on uh, user growth and sub growth and um, and their streaming platform and business and and we can focus on making data useful for uh, music industry professionals and Grace Note can can focus on what they're doing um, I think it all uh, leads to a better place yeah exactly so in the last year we've heard a lot of talk about the uh, different uh, platforms and you, you mentioned uh, the integration with tumblr as well and and other other social networks so have you seen have you got any hard evidence of what uh, the, the talks that's been going about around uh, concerning for example teenagers not using Facebook as much and migrating to new platforms and uh, uh, messaging apps as well so uh, you know what's your take on all that do, do you think that Facebook is losing its relevance a little bit for teenagers sorry the brightness I have to in, sure. in Austin absolutely uh, yeah. flying back to New York so I got to suck this up while so. I can um, <laughs> so I think that you know every year we do a state of the industry report every year and actually we should probably do it several more free you know often <laughs> than that and we, we get a lot of requests um, to do that uh, because things change so often and so you know Facebook's acquisition of Instagram several years ago was brilliant we're seeing much more uh, of a growth rate on that platform but that's because Facebook is so penetrated and and doesn't have can't grow as fast as, as it did before. So, yes, still tons of activity on Facebook. You know, Shakira gets 50,000 page likes a day on average. Wow. Um, but, you know, from artists, you know, anecdotally, you know, you can only access a certain number of, of your fans there. And I think there's a lot of other uh, platforms <laughs> that we're seeing artists focus on um, because of that. So looking at uh, how things are going to progress uh, in terms of uh, you know the collection of data and the understanding of it, uh, how much more work are you doing in, in the contextualization of that data as far as, uh, for example, linking it to radio airplay or, or any other factors that might influence the spikes in traffic for, for artists? Yeah, we do a lot of research, of course, in this area. We, re -up we updated our late night TV appearance study from a couple of years ago. Um, that had made the cover of Billboard because no one had ever quantified the value of late night TV appearances. So we called it the Conan bump because they shows artists who performed on Conan saw on average a bigger lift than, than the other shows. And now it's looking like Fallon when we updated it drives, you know, bigger increases. And of course, they've all shuffled, you know, their chairs. And this is just kind of uh, illustrates the difficulty and kind of constant the need for for evolving how uh, we research and the data sets and, and all of that and and uh, so that just came out and 
and it's been really interesting getting the reaction um, from bookers and from agents and, and yeah. managers because they know a lot of this stuff intuitively, uh, but often there's some surprises. Yeah, sure. And so looking at uh, how uh, the product might evolve over the next uh, 12 months, uh, you know, to 24 months. You know, what, what, what is what is getting you excited right now? What what is getting you up in the morning? Yeah, a lot. Um, so we've talked a lot uh, about a data hierarchy or data pyramid where data, you know, I just came from a panel where we walked through it where the bottom layer is data and that's the kind of foundational level. So, you know, we've spent years and millions of dollars building out that, you know, getting the data and making sure it's accurate on a daily, you know, basis or, or whatever granularity we can. Um, then it's about taking that data and the next level up is information. So how can we combine that in a way and show the music industry for the first time they ever could see iTunes sales against Facebook was through Next Big Sound, you know, in 2010. And now um, looking forward, the most exciting part is the higher order levels of the data pyramid. So uh, knowledge and intelligence and helping with the five years of data, historical data that we have, um, and all the marketing and, and promotion events and the sales data for 70% of the music industry, tying all that together into action plans for artists, managers, labels, and, and the industry to use to say, hey, uh, artists like you who have done X, Y, and Z promotional events see these sort of lifts in social and sales numbers because you're not the first band to play South by Southwest. So what's happened uh, in previous years? when that's when that's happened and, and how do we deliver that in a way that's easy to use and, and makes sense and and folks can take action on it that's interesting actually because it opens up a whole new uh, level of being able to even hook up artists uh, with the with the correct brands just by looking at the data and uh, you know here at South by Southwest we see a lot of brand partnerships with artists and some work out and some don't and some are are, are right and some are, you know don't quite fit uh, at least as far as I can see the, the, the brand identity uh, that with the bands they chose so uh, maybe that's also something that can be looked into and that's a huge area too for us uh, the brand and agency world is um, right now deciding which mu music and artists they should work with based on sitting around a table and comparing you know iPods or music collections and who likes what but actually the data exists out there to see what's reacting in these brands target market and then measure the interaction once that happens so yeah sure what lift does Doritos get from coming down to Austin and, and how about for artists associated with them so for next year when they're making their offers yeah. they can show um, and demonstrate their value to the managers and, and to the artists. That's awesome. So looking at the product, uh, uh, I don't think we've uh, spoken very much about uh, sort of what, what kind of offers that are out there. So uh, if you are an independent artist or a very small label, what kind of products do you offer as opposed to, you know, if you're, if you're a larger company? Yeah, so uh, with the Spotify data, that's all free and, and, a, and a great kind of step towards transparency and democratizing uh, access to information instead of siloing it away. Um, there's also a free plan if you just sign up um, for the social data. So that bottom layer of the pyramid, uh, you know, we want to commoditize and really make our business adding the value around the data yeah. um, because data itself uh, has very little value if, if not progressed. So then there's $20 per artist per month and, you know, packages of five, 10 artists if you're a label or, or management firm. Yeah. Um, and then mid six figure there. million dollar contracts for for larger enterprises. That's great. And uh, in terms of uh, the company is development, you know, you, you got a round of funding last year, right? Uh, 2012. 2012. And so, uh, and so, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens on that front. <laughs> yeah, no fundraising plans uh, now. Right and now? Uh, fortunate to have uh, revenues to, to yeah. allow us uh, to grow from that. That's fantastic. Well, Alex, thanks so much for your time. Thanks for having me. And uh, please do go and check out uh, Next Big Sound at uh, nextbigsound.com. You can also follow them on Twitter. And I'm sure if you go on the website and you have a, a more, uh, a broader reaching inquiry, you can uh, reach out by email and somebody will get back to you. And Alex looks very cool in my hat. Uh, Trying to be like you. Probably more cooler than me in my hat. So, you know, uh, props. <laughs> Thank you. And thanks. thanks for listening to the DMT coverage of South by Southwest. You can find out more on digitalmusictrends.com or on youtube.com slash digitalmusictrends.